the value of GitLab is this flow because without the flow, we're not actually exercising all of what the platform is. We start with high level epics, portfolio management. We do point in time milestones. We create issues, assign issues, do something with it, push code, even if that's infrastructure as code, do testing, do scanning, collaboration and review, fix our code, make sure it works before we approve, merge accepted and deploy into production. And so it's this flow that I want to demonstrate for you today. It's demo time. I'm going to take on the persona of a junior infrastructure engineer, a junior ops person at a company. Let me introduce you to BeKindCom. This is the entire group that I have. And within it, I have an apps subgroup with applications deployed. I have a governance subgroup where I've defined team members, an infrastructure group where I've put Kubernetes clusters that could be deployed out there and in, into the world. I mean, put the, the Terraform project that will deploy those clusters. This is Ops Ingrid. Um, she's DevOps. So when she looks into apps, she can't see any of the apps. Uh, she's only a member of team DevOps. So she only sees that there. Infrastructure, she has some visibility to, uh, because this is more related to her job. There is a cluster manager project here, which if you're familiar with GitLab, you, you're sort of familiar with. I have highly customized this. This is in name only familiar to you if you're familiar with GitLab and, and how we do Kubernetes management. Now to show you, having introduced, as a new hire, Ingrid has an onboarding issue. And so if we look in her to-dos, Scott Brywell has assigned Ingrid a, an onboarding issue. And so we're going to follow this. Welcome to your first day. Please deploy an application called Post Facto into production in your own namespace. Okay, well, that's wild. Day one, we're going to install something into production. So because I've done this before, I'm just going to create a new tab so I can see my tasks here in this tab. And okay, we're going to create a merge request against this issue. I see the button here. We're going to create a merge request against this issue uh, here. And this is part of the GitLab flow, epics, issues, merge requests. Now, what am I supposed to do? Uh, make and commit the following code changes using the web UI. So in the merge request, we can come here and check out the, the feature branch that has been created in the web IDE. And this is against the cluster manager project, okay? Within the manifest for our production cluster, create a new namespace and install the post facto helm chart. Use the ops onboarding snippet to complete the following. Okay, what is that? Oh, we have snippets. So in our onboarding task, we can have code that is commonly used that people can leverage and use for their own projects. Okay, so create a namespace manifest and manifest, okay. So create a namespace under the cluster that we're related to under manifests. I'm going to create a manifest, create a new file under manifest. This file is going to be called team Ops Ingrid, or the, the folder is going to be Team Ops Ingrid, and the, the name of the file will be uh, this. All right. Ops Ingrid, RID. Uh, the contents of the file, we will just copy and paste. Uh, we're going to change this to Ops Ingrid, very nice. Now, what else What else are we doing? Uh, namespace manifest in the same folder, create an ingress for the anticipation of installing post facto. Okay, he wants me to create an ingress. All right, here's the file name, file name. And in my IDE in ops, team ops Ingrid, I'm gonna create a new file. Oh, that's already there. File name, ingress. All right, what is my ingress? Here we go. So the ingress is, you know, going to give me name services for my 
application that I deploy. Ops Ingrid. I can't believe they're just going to let me deploy straight into production on my first day. Uh, in the in the run me sh in charts. Oh, deploy a Helm chart. Well, I thought this was GitOps because GitOps just takes and pulls manifests. Where is the Helm command actually going to run? That's interesting. Okay, well, I believe it. Let's see how it works. Run me dot sh. I don't know what that is. Uh, manifest charts. Uh, we're going to create a new file. Team. Ops Ingrid in this folder, and I'm going to put runme.sh. Okay, what does that do? Runme.sh looks like yeah, it's like Helm commands. So this is this is like imperative. So the first one in manifest that must be a git pull capability, and Kubernetes and the agent is going to pull the manifest into Kubernetes to deploy. But in this one. This is an imperative command. This is a push-based GitOps where something is going to run the Helm command and deploy using all these variables. Where are these variables? Uh, cube cuddle commands. Uh, cube cuddle, cube control. We're actually going to exec and create an admin user. I wonder what the credentials are. All right. Well, that's what they told me to do. I don't need the snippets anymore. All right, so create a commit. I can't believe they're going to let me push into production. Um, all right, I'll just, yeah, I don't know what to do. I'll create that, commit it. Cool. Um, now what? I see down here there's some pipelines. What is this? So here's my pipelines. It's doing secret detection. That's cool. Um, commit scan, no secrets. Yeah, I didn't add any secrets. They were all variables. All right, so what am I supposed to do? I've made, I made the commit. I did the namespace, the folder, the run me. Monitor your pipeline for any leaked credentials. Yeah, okay, I did that. Okay, set the merge request reviewer to S. Brightwell to accept and merge your changes into production. Oh, that's right. So as a junior admin, first day on the job, I don't have access to deploy into production. I've made all these manifest changes, but they're not in production yet because they're on a feature branch right? I've created a feature branch in my merge request. Uh, my merge request. Here's my merge request. I've created a feature branch, not production. And so all these pipelines and, and scans are running on the feature branch. I can mark it as ready to merge, but I don't have the possibility of merging, of accepting. Okay. They wanted me to add a reviewer, select oops, Brightwell. Okay, there's that guy. He's a handsome guy. Uh, all right, so I've set him as the reviewer. Now what? Well, let's see. S. Brightwell needs to come back. S. Brightwell and Be Kind here has a new to-do. Ops Ingrid requested a review. Okay, so I need to go review this. What? This is my, my favorite new employee, Ingrid. She's on our ops team. Uh, no vulnerabilities were selected. The pipeline looks good. What changes did she make? Oh, yeah, she's going through the snippets that I did. Uh, run me dot sh. Yep, uh, she's added that correctly. Did she put her name in team s brightwell? Oh, she's got the wrong name in there. Ops Ingrid, she forgot that one. Ops Ingrid, cool. So, this, um, change to be your username start a review uh in my merge request um, i'm going to have to open the web ide i'm going to have to go back to charts Team Ops Ingrid, run me and say Ops Ingrid. But this is why we have reviews. Class, create commit, commit, excellent. So now we go back to administrator. 
onboarding issue. Yes, okay, so Ops Ingrid is there. We finish our review, uh, fixed, submit. Great, so everything looks good. So my junior admin has created the manifests, has updated the Helm charts, and now as an administrator myself who owns the production cluster, I accept the merge. Uh, there can be an approval process formally as well, and we might see that later in the dev section where we have security vulnerabilities. Uh, but here, uh, it's enough to accept the merge. Now, what happens? Two things happen in this particular scenario. Now that I've accepted the merge onto the production branch, um, two things are happening. The GitLab agent has automatically pulled the manifests that Ops Ingrid created and has deployed a namespace and a ingress controller. Okay, so Ops Ingrid in the last 38 seconds. Uh, oh, and uh, the CI pipeline has kicked in. So let's look at uh, get ingress. So there's the ingress that came from the manifest, right? And so the CI pipeline has kicked in and is running. Deploy. So I've written some custom code here that uh, deploys Helm charts in a runner. And so this power of using both kinds of GitOps, the pull and now the push, the GitLab runner, the CI functionality, is executing the Helm command, uh, is executing the cube control command. So the, the script that I wrote to do this actually uh, interrogates all the different cluster folders that I have for demo purposes. So it's interrogating all the folders that have charts. I'm rerunning the Helm chart for the GitLab runner every time I do this. How can I do it? Because it's idempotent, right? I can rerun the Helm charts every time. And if it's already there and nothing has changed, nothing will change. But if a new version is out there in the repo, in the, in the container registry, or something like that for Ingress Nginx, uh, then it will be re uh, redeployed. So make sure if you're doing things like this, that your scripts are idempotent. Uh, so here comes Team Ops Ingrid. The post facto Helm chart is being deployed. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. It's okay. And the cube cuddle exec command was executed. So now I should have a running post facto instance. So now that Postgres and Redis are up, the actual application is up as well. And keep in mind, this is very important functionality. You're, you won't be deploying into Kubernetes only the things that your developers author. So while pull-based GitOps and hydrating your own manifests and doing that, that sort of by hand and then doing the agent-based pull is great, some of you will want to run Helm charts. Uh, some of you will want to run the customize command to actually template and hydrate those final uh, Kubernetes manifests, where are you going to run it? On your laptop and hope it works in production? No, you should run those in CI to hydrate the final manifest. And then if you need to commit it back to the repo and that commit back to the repo is actually what pulls the hydrated manifest down into production. So um, there's a couple of different ph design philosophies for how you might use this, but they all uh, you can do anything you would like to do because GitLab has both the pull-based and the push-based GitOps. Immediately, you can see the power of the GitLab flow in that junior Kubernetes admins, junior infrastructure people can edit the infrastructure as code in the Git repo, but do so in a feature branch that mandates review by senior administrators to then uh, run in production. So it's not a free for all. Uh, it is a highly controlled, secure platform for change control of configuration and source code. So faster, 
deployments into production and safer deployments into production using